Again, we want to appreciate everybody's presence. We want to thank you for coming tonight. Uh, your officers in the city of Oakland, Al Marshall, Cheryl Dunaway, and myself planned this with the help of quite a few other individuals who we'll name. But at the end of the evening, as I stated before, we're all going to leave here with serious authority on how to deal with what's going on in the city of Oakland. A few people who we need to name, Elizabeth Alexander, our political action committee chair, did a lot to help us put this together. From hanging balloons to authorizing finance. Chris Daly, interim political director. Gary Jimenez, SEIU First Vice President. Gladys Gray, our Social and Economic Justice Committee Chair. A sister from Berkeley who has done so much to help us and she just stays behind the scenes. Josie Camacho, Executive Secretary Treasurer of Alameda Labor Council. A hands-on sister, Renita Terry. City Workers Industry Chair, Roxanne Sanchez, President of SEIU 1021. Larry Bradshaw, Second Vice President. Our staff, Sequinee Bugs. Joe Kiefer, Kiefer. Margaret Cunningham. Linda Joseph, our staff director, is present and has all. Now, no program starts without being blessed. And what we get ready to throw down this year in the city of Oakland needs to be blessed. Without any further ado, Pastor Harold R. Mayberry. Let us pray. God, we quiet ourselves before your presence. You've told us, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and you promised you'd open doors for us. We've come to the realization, God, that our city is sick. Mm. Well... And whenever there is a sickness, we need to go to the great physician. We believe right now that you are able to do anything. So we believe, God, that you can move on the heart, mind, and spirit of this city. There are those who have and ignore those who have not. There are those who just don't care that there are those who are struggling just to make it. So God, we ask you right now to bless, keep, provide for, help, heal, and fix those who stand before you calling on your name. Oh God, we pray you visit the leadership of this city. And where there is a spirit of hate and non-concern, we pray you change it and turn it around. God, we pray you move on this local. Thank you, God, for their courage. Thank you for the power and presence of your spirit upon them, which moves them into action. You've told us in your word, where there is no vision, your people perish. God, we pray you don't let us perish. That's right. Keep a vision before us. Keep us motivated and inspired to make a difference. And God, because we trust you, we claim it's already done, and we say thank you for it. In your name we pray, and the people of God say it. Amen. Amen.
the host for the evening. The lady of the house, Cheryl's going to introduce her. But just because we didn't say her at first, we're going to save her for a special thank you. Okay, hello everyone. And for those who don't know me, I'm sure a lot of you do. But I'm Cheryl Dunaway. I'm the second vice president for the Oakland chapter of, of course, Local 1021. I try, I try, I really do. <laughs> and so this next introduction, for a lot of us, needs no introduction. Um, she is the queen of barbecue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's been serving barbecue. The family has been serving barbecue for years. I was born and raised in San Francisco. And they had an Everton Jones right on 3rd Street. And we always went there. So um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Miss Dor Dorothy Jones. I'm sorry. And um, she just really needs no introduction. She's just, just awesome. So welcome the uh, host and the owner of this wonderful Everton Jones barbecue. I'd like to uh, welcome Dorothy Jones. <laughs> So one thing she knew how to do was to cook. So she started off, and a lot of you need to know this history, she started off on 7th Street at Jenkins Barbecue. And she worked there a number of years, and she got fired. <laughs> and I came home from school one day, and she was crying. I said, why are you crying, Mama? She said, she fired. And I said, you should open your own business. And she told me, you must be a fool. Where we get the money from? And at that point, a lot of you don't know this history, but I should tell you that Flint's Barbecue was born for my mother. Wow. That right on Haven's Court, there was this little right. hamburger. Right. Yeah. That was a little hamburger restaurant. And I came home from school again, and she was all excited about it. She was a manager now <laughs> at this restaurant. And as you know, Flint's was no bigger than that particular area. That's right. right That's right. And I said, well, who you managing? There's nobody but you. <laughs> <laughs> but as you know, the history, that became one of the largest barbecue restaurants because they went on and opened up on Shattuck, and they opened up on San Pablo, and she got fired again. So I tell my staff all the time, I have to make this business work because nobody's gonna hire me. <laughs> nobody's gonna hire me. Hi, Alpha. Partners in crime. I wanna, um, actually I only got a few minutes, but anyway, welcome everybody. <laughs> it's your, it's your oh, house. Your oh, oh, I got so involved, I'm sorry. But Alpha and I, we, we go way, way back. I know I don't look that old, but we go way back. <laughs> but I could tell the Occupy Oakland people how to successfully take over a building. Matter of fact, during 1989, the Loma Prieta earthquake, as you remember, the devastation was all the poor people in Oakland, those hotels, Cypress, West Oakland, everything. And Red Cross had came in here and did a massive, they raised millions. And they said they had to take it back to their headquarters. And we chained ourselves up and said, you gotta leave that money here. Matter of fact, we demanded 
$5 million. See, you gotta have some money. Come on now. <laughs> we demanded $5 million. We, we demanded $5 million from the city of Oakland, $5 million from Red Cross, and $5 million from the county. Because we didn't have no money. <laughs> and that's where the Henry Robinson Multi Service Center came about. But early on, Ethel and I, back to back, we realized that affordable housing didn't exist here in Oakland. So one of the things that we got real good at, oh, this works, this demand, some more money. So we asked for $3 million, and it just got real good. Because what I learned, if you don't ask, and you might have to do nonviolent civil disobedience. So I'm happy to say that from day one, when Occupy Oakland happened, I actually went and got me a tent, took my grandbaby, he's 10, and we spent the night. We were one of the first campers out there. We lasted. I lasted about three three nights out there. But I would come to the General Assembly meetings every day. And even to this day, as, as uh, early as late as Sunday, I provided 50 chickens yeah. on Sunday for their uh, festival. I'm saying to everybody tonight, I am the 99%. And it pisses me off that as a small business that I have to pay so much taxes for people who don't pay taxes. And our governor, I used to be his neighbor, used to be down here, and used to patronize. And I remember he said, I'm gonna build 10,000 houses down here. It's almost like a ghost town. I don't think they've been able to fill those condos right over here, but that used to be my parking lot. That's why you guys couldn't find a parking lot. I remember that. But, and then to basically dismantle the redevelopment agency. That's how we were able to build affordable housing. So I know I'm over my time and, and I'm gonna sit down, but I want to thank you for choosing me. Josie, where you at? Because I got a, a phone call that said, we need your help to cook 5,000 hamburgers. I don't think I ever cooked 5,000 hamburgers. But that was when they shut down the port. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is talking about, I've been able to make money. Come on now. Yeah. I've been able to make money. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> but the bottom line is, we are 99%, and it's a shame that 1%, as hard as we work, is ruling and running everything and paying nothing. So i like to just welcome everybody again and thank you. I just do want to share this one last thing. It took me about three years to develop this business because I couldn't get the city of Oakland, and I've been here all my life, to give me any funds to be here. I had to actually go all the way to LA and had to go to the California Korea Bank. California. There's only one branch over in San Francisco, but the other one was in LA, in order to get funds here to try to prove to the city of Oakland that I could do this. And I'm proud that Everett and Jones is celebrating 38 years right. in business. <laughs> and I'm opening up a new location 
on High Street in MacArthur in about, in about four weeks. And that was the first time that I was able to get a loan from the city of Oakland. Yeah. So it's real sad. And I employ about 58 employees here. I get no tax credits. Yeah. I, I, I could cry the blues, but I won't. Come hear me on Saturday nights. She will try her hardest to um, see that your problems are resolved. And I just want to welcome you and I thank you for coming, Miss Roxanne Sanchez. <laughs> All right. Well, Oakland is certainly ground zero for the fight of the 99% against the one. Uh, we have definitely drawn the line in the sand here, and I'm proud that this union is standing on the side of working people. We are dedicated and we're kicking off in this incredible member engagement that was the vision of city leaders who got together with their officers and our city industry representative to put this together. Yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> the only thing that power understands is power. And the only way we're going to get back to what is ours is by taking it. No one is going to give it to us. We have to work with everyone. We have to work with our community leaders in our schools. We have to work in our unions as workers. We have to work with one another. We have to support each other and the communities which we serve. The only way to win is to stand together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roxanne. We truly appreciate you and all your hard work. This next speaker, I got the pleasure of meeting Renita last year. Uh, Renita Terry is our city industry chairperson. Uh, she is our voice to the executive board. She's our voice for us to be heard on our, in, you know, our, all of our issues that we have with Oakland. We make sure we vet them through Miss Renita and. She, gets, she makes sure that we're taken care of. So without further ado, I will definitely, I'm, it's a pleasure for me to introduce Ms. Renita Terry, our industry chair, industry, city industry chairperson. Sorry. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, hi, Oakland. I'm Renita Terry, she said, the city's industry chair for SEIU 1021. I am you. Without you, I don't exist. You guys have, this past couple of weeks, I have to commend you. Tonight's member engagement is just what, member engagement, but actually you started two weeks ago. When I've seen you guys band together and come out to the council, your leadership has been vigilant at the council, council chambers, all the dignitary offices and so forth, along with staff. I commend you all. I, as they say, I'm your city's industry chair. I work along with your leadership in uh, moving your programs, your interests, your voice to the executive board. We meet bi-monthly. I would love to see all of you at the next city's in industry meeting, which is sad. They say I talk soft. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Better. 
I talk soft on occasion, but good, put a rally in front of me and see how radical I can be. Oh, right. I love to be radical. And like I said, the last couple of weeks and at the, at the council meeting, I was up there, I'm like, oh yeah, I love right. this, okay. But the next city industry meeting is March 10th. It is in Fairfield. It's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Excuse me, this one will have to be cut a little short. It will be 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. I would love for Oakland to come out and to fellowship and engage with the other cities that have the same interests and are fighting the same battles that you're fighting. We're stronger in numbers. There's other cities that come, that attend. There's Berkeley, there's Emeryville. The uh, Chief Steward of Emeryville is in the house tonight. There's Hayward. There's a whole 32 cities, a host of 32 cities. If we all band together and work toward the common goals that affect all cities, we can move mountains. So with that, I'm gonna say, I hope to see you on March 10th in Fairfield, California. Thank you. You guys are gonna see that the common theme tonight is gonna to be connecting to community, connecting to the principles, the core principles of what Occupy stands for and how I peel back the truth off of what happened in 2008. It wasn't your health care. It wasn't your wages. It was thievery and treason at a very high level. But I'm not going to go on because we're going to try to move the program. Please stay to the end. We're going to move as quickly as we can because it's information that we all need to leave here with. Now, our next speaker is the pastor of First AME Methodist Episcopal Church in Oakland, California. He's from the city of New Orleans, served as a housing commissioner. In October, Reverend Mayberry was appointed to the, as a senior pastor of First AME, chairperson of the Episcopal Committee of African Methodism. Dr. Mayberry served on the Civil Service Commission in the city of Oakland and as chairperson for two years and was our friend during that time frame. Mr. Pastor Mayberry is a member of a national group called Occupy the Dream, an organization to mobilize the country around Dr. King's vision of waging war on poverty, unemployment, and injustice. He's a member of the executive committee. Of other members are Dr. Chavis from Manhattan, Dr. Jamal Bryant, Bishop Missalant Thompson, Pastor Daryl Ham of Baltimore. Without any further ado, Dr. Harold R. Mayberry. Thank you, Dwight. My pastor. <laughs> I'm about to say that. <laughs> when did it become okay to stop dreaming? When did it become okay for those who have to rob those who have not? When did it become okay to believe that if you are not a part of the 1%, then you can't make it? When did it become okay to steal from those who are just trying to survive? Occupy nationally is about the fact that people are frustrated and people are in pain and people are angry. And whenever there is anger and frustration and pain, somebody has to say something. Isn't it interesting that all across the country, people who have been ignored are beginning to speak truth to power. You heard a few minutes ago, nobody is going to give you any power. If you want power, you have to begin to speak truth to power. Occupy the Dream is not separate from the Occupy movement. Okay. Occupy the Dream is the initiative, initiative of Ben Chavis and Russell Simmons and Jamal Bryant to bring together the faith community, which for too long has been sitting on the sideline watching the parade go by. Okay. And is coming to the table to help move forward a vision and a movement that will call to the consciousness of people who have ignored their moral responsibility the fact that it's time to wake up and address the needs of the people. Bring it. Come on, man. on 
January 16th, last month, Occupy the Dream led a movement in 13 cities in front of Federal Reserve Banks across the country. Why Federal Reserve Banks? Not because that's where the money that has been hurting our people really is, but because it needs to be a central place a focus where attention can be called to the fact that America needs to wake up to the fact that the BMAs and the Wells Fargo's and the city banks and the Chase banks can no longer continue to treat our people who have made them what they are as less than human. And so I can have a dream on February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. It's suggesting that it also must be Love Our Community Day. Oh, yeah. And on Love Our Community Day, we're asking people across the country to withdraw a minimum of $30 or more from your conventional bank and invest it in a minority-owned bank or credit union. Don't tell me moving money won't make a difference. If you continue to move your money from big banks into smaller banks, the bigger banks will get the message. And so we're saying that there are credit unions and minority banks in this Bay Area that we're asking you to move your money to, and don't, not only that, but suppose after having moved on one day a million, I'm sorry, 50, $150 million. Suppose on that day after having moved a million, uh, I'm sorry, $150 million. Suppose that has not caught the attention of B of A and Wells Fargo and Citibank and Chase Bank. Then in March, we're going to ask all of the Greek organizations around the country and all of the professionals around the country, the doctors, the lawyers, the nurses, we're going to ask all of the churches around the country, take all of your money out of the big banks and move all of your money into the credit unions and minority banks. When we begin to move money, we begin to move people. We are believing that this is a movement that is not going to go away. And so we partner with Occupy. I commend this union. Whenever hurting people begin to stand up, somebody is going to take notice. Whenever hurting people begin to say enough is enough, I promise you somebody is going to hear it. Don't believe you've not made an impact on City Hall. Trust me, they know you're here. If, in fact, the news media will not tell the truth about what's going on, Tell the truth yourself. Go to churches, stand on street corners, stand in front of banks, let people know what the truth really is. And I promise you, there are those who God will raise up to join you in making a difference in this community. May God bless you. Occupy, Occupy. Uh, we have some people here from Occupy who we want to bring up, and they're going to exchange their ideas with you all. Because the principles that Occupy stand for, while we were going back and forth to work, we were on a treadmill while they were out at Franco Gawa Plaza getting beat by police. I got a family. I have a house. I have a car note. I needed to be out there because I've been getting dogged for the last eight years. But the bottom line was I was too busy. Then I look up and I see them out there, and it's my personal opinion. I can't make anybody else have one, but they did that for me because I'm definitely hurting. So I have Baraka Peller, Baruka Peller, and Kim Rojas. Occupy Oakland. and I'm privileged to be here with you guys. We're all the 
Okay, you said stay by those lines. <laughs> uh, I'm privileged to be here. And I also am uh, the National Postal Mail Handlers Union uh, here in Oakland. So um, an active member of Occupy Oakland. And when I say active, I mean on the front lines. I was arrested, held for 53 hours on Saturday, wow. along with many others, wow. fighting for the 99%. Wow. And I too, you know, understand the need. What drew me there was many of my members are under foreclosure, and our union is under attack like no other time in history. They're trying to take our bargaining unit rights from us. They left the table and put it in the halls of Congress. And nothing that will come out of there, there's not one bill that really represents workers. But more importantly than that, it's our responsibility. It's time for us to lift our freaking voices loudly, you know? One of the best chants that I have in Occupy Oakland, and I'm gonna to try to read it to you guys, is nothing is impossible, another world is possible, and it will take all of us in this room and all of our families to turn this world to a more just and fair for everybody. That's what I fight for every single day. And you know what? A job is one thing, a union job, but we need jobs, period, that pay good wages, living wages. You know what, I don't have a living wage, regardless of what they say. I'm a single mother, I make $52,000 a year, and 4,700 of that goes to pay for my health care. That doesn't leave me much after my taxes. And I barely make it month to month, and let me go down for a, like an injury on the job, I will lose the little bit that I have. So we need to unite together and stand together. Do not. Do not be fooled by that media that is lying to you that we're all radicals, we're you playing in somebody's playground. This is serious to me. My daughter was arrested, she's a student, and we need to stand together. Don't believe the lies they lie for historically on any movement that's uprised in Oakland, especially when it comes to police repression. So I thank you. Is this good? Yeah. Okay. So I have to apologize. I'm a little unprepared for this. And the reason I'm unprepared is because I've spent the majority of my week documenting the dozens and dozens of injuries of Oakland residents by the Oakland police on Saturday, and also trying to help those 400 people, Oakland residents, who were arrested, um, get out of jail. And they were, they were lost in the system. They were beaten in jail. Um, there was illegal interrogations, they were put in the hole, they were reprocessed. And so what happened this week was something that we should all take really seriously. And I know this hasn't surfaced in the media yet, but we all know about it at Occupy Oakland and some of those 400 people who were brutalized. So that's why I'm a little bit um, unprepared. So I, I'm just gonna explain a little bit what Occupy Oakland is. We are part of a global movement that is attacking the 1%, the same people that are cutting their jobs and attacking us in the plaza, on the street, in the media. That's who the 1% is. Occupy Oakland, like any other movement, is not one set of strategy or tactics. Occupy Oakland is basically a springboard for anyone in Oakland that wants to come in and organize together to make positive social change and to get our needs met. Break it down. To get involved and fight back against budget cuts, school closures, police violence, and the disempowerment of communities in Oakland. So a large, diverse part of the Oakland community came together as Occupy Oakland in order to get these needs met because nobody else is getting these needs met. The system isn't getting the needs met. We don't have anyone else to go to to get our needs met, our basic needs. Food, shelter, housing, clothing, schools, education, parks, libraries, closing. Everything that we need to survive and be, and be humanity is not getting met. So that's why Occupy Oakland came together to self-organize, to figure out with each other what to do, because we can't look above anymore. We gotta look side to side. All we have is each other now. What, what have we done at Occupy Open? A lot of people don't understand what we've done. Well, we've helped a lot of families reclaim their foreclosed homes. We've staffed hard picket lines and uh, resisted scab labor. We've organized against police violence and communities of color. We've held a general strike and day of action, shutting down the 1% all across Oakland. Right. We've also shut down the courts twice. Yes. And once was in a West Coast coordinated court shutdown. And why? To express our solidarity with Longshoremen in Longview, Washington, whose union was getting busted by the EGT. 
a multinational grain conglomerate that wasn't using ILWU historic labor in Longview. This threatened the ILWU largely, and, and here in Oakland, largely the good black employment that still exists, all up and down the coast. And what did EGT do now? EGT was going to bring a grain ship into Longview. Occupy Seattle, Occupy Oakland, Occupy Portland, and Occupy Longview were organizing a caravan to go into Longview and blockade that, that grain ship that was going to use scab labor. What did EGT do? They yeah. stopped the ship and they went back to the negotiating table. That's right. So, and why? Because we proved to them that if we can shut down all the ports on the West Coast, we can block your grain ship in that little ass, you know, in that little port. <laughs> so they had to stop that ship and go back to the negotiating table, and now IOWU has those jobs again. That's right. A few months ago, that was impossible. Another reason we shut down the ports was to, was to express our solidarity with the port truckers and their terrible co working conditions. They're misclassified as independent contractors. They're unable to organize and they get no benefits. The, the empowerment that came, the positive response that we got from the port truckers has led us to another organizing capacity with them. And then yesterday, the port truckers in Seattle shut down the port in Seattle to protest their working conditions. So. These are just some of the examples of how we build relationships with workers and unions who aren't just working with Occupy, but are a part of Occupy, and, and feel and understand that together we actually do have this power to fight back and to get what we need. And I just want to remind people that the same mayor and the same system that is cutting jobs, closing schools, parks, and libraries, is the same mayor and the same system that is trying to destroy our movement, together with the narrative of the media. So don't believe it. The same Chamber of Commerce that is helping her also supports the privatization of all your jobs. The budget priorities that give the majority of the budget to the police to profile and harass our neighborhoods is taking money that is sorely needed for schools and social programs. And to fund killer police to attack us and attack veterans like Scott Olson and fire rubber bullets in the marches. We have the same enemies. We share a commitment to social justice and the empowerment of communities in Oakland. The forces that are opposing us, all of us here in this room and all of us at Occupy, they are unified and strong. We can join forces in solidarity and be just as unified and strong as they are. So what we are, and stronger, that's right. Because we're going to get what was ours. There you go. So what, we're, what we want, what we're calling on, is for all of us to understand that all we have is each other, and to come together and organize together and stand up together. Thank you. Are we ready to fight? Yeah. Are we ready to fight? Yeah. Are we ready to fight? Yeah. Show you right. Uh, just a quick little house cleaning. We have uh, Jean Cohan, political director, Alameda Labor Council. Jean, just in the house. Jean's in the house. Now let's hurry everybody, please. Um, our next guest speaker, I haven't had an opportunity probably over an email or two of, of actually meeting with her, but she is a member of ACE, Alliance Californians for Community Empowerment. I just want to share with you real quick that I've had an opportunity to work alongside with Brother Anthony. Um, they actually have been out in our community going after the blighted properties, which the city has failed to collect the money from the big banks. This money could go into our coffers to preserve our jobs. So we have some alliances here tonight that I hope every one of you guys, please, if you can, take a moment, introduce yourself, get to know these people, because with our churches and our other alliances that we have here tonight, we can take this city back. Yeah. We can provide the services to the citizens that they deserve. Um, Maryland. Reynolds, SEIU Head Start member, and she's a member of X. Marilyn, would you please come up? Good evening. It's really, truly a pleasure to be here amongst all you fighters. 
Our organization is the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. And that simply means that we organize people to fight for their own rights and to fight for whatever problem they're facing. The main thing that we're working on currently is this foreclosure crisis. And none of us have really been able to figure out how it came about, but we all need to examine how in the world did millions of people, I'm not talking about a handful of people, a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand, millions of people losing their homes at the same time. It had to be thievery. Just as the pastor said, somebody pulled a fast one. And we are the ones who are suffering for it. There are so many union members, teachers, firemen, policemen, losing their homes, losing their jobs. And the banks are responsible for it. We have been working with Occupy, but we were on the forefront. I want to say that ACE was out there at the banks divesting, okay? We were the ones telling people, take your money out of these banks and put them into the credit unions that support people like us, the 99%. These banks have, it, uh, Bill Moyers has been having like a whole week of people who have written books who are talking about how did this how did this happen? How did this foreclosure crisis come about? And it, it, it's just mind blowing, you know, how Citibank and Bank of America and a lot of those banks just really put out bad loans. Um, it was just predatory lending. Um, and, and just a whole bunch of other things. So what we're trying to do in ACE, we're trying to make sure that people fight to stay in their homes. Um, even those people who have been foreclosed on, we have been able to help them get back and reoccupy their home. There's a lady named Gayla. She has been fighting. She was actually um, at work and her children were at home, the, the college students, and they were put out by the sheriff. She has reoccupied her home, and we are working with her and giving her legal help so that she can stay there. Um, as far as the um, money that the banks owe the city of Oakland for the homes that they have already foreclosed on, and they were refusing to pay for these properties that they let fall into blight, let other people uh, occupy them who were homeless. I can't blame people for going in a home that they see vacant if they don't have a home, okay? But it's up to the bank. Since you took the home from the original homeowner, it is your duty to pay money to the city because the city has been sending out our workers to keep up these properties. To date, we have collected over $900,000 in six months. In six months. And we as workers need to make sure that that money doesn't go get diverted to somebody else's little pet project. You know, we have all kinds of things that we need here in the city that need to be done including hiring back some of our people who have lost their jobs. So, I'm going to turn the mic over to Anthony. This is a dynamic young man who has come to the city. Who has come to the city of Oakland and uh, has organized um, people to go out canvassing in the neighborhoods to sign people up right. for AIDS right. so that people can fight back oh, for themselves. Right. 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 Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm going to talk so you guys don't keep me up. So really quickly, there's three ways that we've been engaging homeowners. So the way ACE works is a lot like the union, except we're in the community. So homeowners join what we call the Home Defender League, and we have three basic tactics that we've used. 
First, a lot of y'all know this because a lot of y'all have been at some of our bank actions to help our brothers and sisters in 10 to 1 who are getting forced out of their homes by the banks. So the first is our home defenses, where we actually go over to the bank branch. If they refuse to work with homeowners and they give this nonsense of I lost your paperwork and I don't know what happened to it, um, but I'm going to put you out on the street and sell your house for like a tenth of what it's worth or what you owe. Um, we go over and we do a occupation of the bank and we basically demand that they save the person's home or we're not leaving. And in a lot of cases, Al's been at a number of these, we've actually moved furniture into the banks and said, if you're putting us out on the street, we're gonna move in. Right. So, yeah. they love that. Um, so we do a lot of home defenses and then we've also organized call-ins where we call the bank if they're gonna harass families and call five times a day and send you ridiculous letters threatening you, we're gonna harass them back and demand that they keep people in their homes. So we organize call in actions to banks who are forcing people out. The second thing we do is eviction defenses for folks who it's you know frankly too late, they already been put out of their home. We uh, actually organize people to get to the house at six in the morning, the day of the eviction. We uh, blockade the house, we call the sheriff, we call the bank. And we do our absolute best to put enough pressure to call the sheriff off, and we've actually been pretty successful in that as well. All right. And then the third option was, <laughs> what Marilyn said is the home occupations. We've actually uh, successfully moved a couple families back into their homes, and we defended the house. And all this really is about changing the debate in this country from cuts and taxes to who's going to pay. And are we going to stand there and let them roll over us, or are we going to actually fight back? And frankly, thanks to a lot of the folks in this room joining together with community members who are part of ACE, we've actually been able to beat the banks back. We've saved six homes just in the first like two weeks of January, right. just by fighting back. So, <laughs> so we really appreciate y'all uh, having us here, and we you know hope to work with y'all soon. We have these little packets that I was again, Dwight threatened to beat me up if I didn't have these. <laughs> Um, we have these packets, and there's something on the back that's got a uh, account on me if you want to get involved, if you're losing your home. We know there's a lot of shame and a lot of, you know, that's sometimes right. guilt with this. Don't, don't, yeah, don't be ashamed. There's a lot of people in this situation. And frankly, the only way, the, the only language the banks understand is a language of force. So, thank you very much. Um, just on that note, just on that note, uh, just a little, my own personal testimony. I lost my home, my family home, of over 12 years. And just thinking about it, hmm. But I'm telling y'all, I lost my home because if there's anybody in this room, if there's anybody in this room, we're trying to bring resources to help you fight to keep your home. We ain't playing. So please, as we bring these resources into you, you guys got to step up. Don't hold it in, it'll kill you. I kept it in me for a long time. Please. Moving right along. This next lady, I had an opportunity of meeting her maybe 10, 12 years ago. The Legacy Local, the local number 790. She was at us way back then telling us brothers and sisters we better get our act together. A decade ago. We are behind you guys. We got to get our action in gear and get the step in. It takes all of us, not one or two, three, four people going to these various allies sitting in on these meetings. It takes all of us. We have to get in where we fit in. Please make the time. This next lady, Ethel Longscott, as I mentioned, I met her about 10, 12 years ago. And we hadn't connected, we hadn't seen each other maybe eight or nine, maybe in passing once or twice. But this lady's spirit, 
a decade ago has not changed. She is a warrior with over 40 years in the background of, of, of setting up grassroots community organizations. She's been socially involved from the bottom to the top, in the middle. She doesn't care where she has to go. She'll make it happen. Without further ado, the executive director of the Women's Economic Agenda Project, Ethel Longscott. So that conference we're talking about, 
that will be held at Laney College will be also about the business of reestablishing new economies. All of you have got to be a part of this. And we've got to get, when the brother says, we got to step up. Because it's too late when your baby's in the casket. It's too late when they're in the drug. Come on now. It's too late when we're dealing with the children out here selling their behinds because that's the only way they can eat. What kind of country have we become that the only way that we're going to advance is to whip up on poor people, on old people, on immigrants, making them the enemy, and this is the richest nation on the planet. So check this out. Check this out. I'm not the begging crew. I'm the warrior crew. I, I, and I want to be with the ones who, are, who can help pray for me and help me, help me stay humble. But I'm also understanding that well, we got to have a broader vision. So all of us bringing together this transformative movement, not, I'm not talking about transforming this economy so that we might live in dignity. That's what I'm talking about. So we look forward to the opportunity to work together. I'm not just into swapping no war stories, but I'm all into how do we pass on that knowledge so that we might live a better life. And each of the injuries, Brother Al, are about helping to infuse us to stand strong and understand what kind of system to damn it and they're putting it to hell so that we can say we have put exploitation and oppression into the, into the dustbins of history right along with slavery and the oppression of women. I thank you for your time.